Okay, my friends, this is going to be the day that we finish this nonsense. I've been eight years trying to show this to Fermilab. They're trying to solve the big mysteries. They're looking for neutrinos. Could they be the reason the universe is even made of matter? Because right now, nothing in the, the current standard model works. It's not a single thing works. They don't know what gravity is. They don't know what light is made out of. They don't recognize the fact that the universe is packed with particles that we're scrubbing through and our atmosphere is scrubbing through them, heating it up like crazy out there and just it's 3,000 degrees almost at the edge of our atmosphere, the ionosphere just below it's minus 100 degrees. <laughs> That's the separation of the scrub zone and they give no credence to the fact that the universe is saturated with particles of every type and light will slow down coming through those. I will show you light speeding up, slowing down, all this. They're talking about Einstein's dream of the universe and all this stuff and they want to watch for neutrinos emerging. Let's see if we can show, I can show you all of these things happening on a desktop for less than $500. They're funding agencies, more than a thousand scientists all over the globe. They're digging holes everywhere. They're building machines and equipment. There are literally billions and billions and billions in the mega billions and they and, and we're scrapping here for in there for a dollar for food stamps this is uh, this is not really necessary and I'll show you why I can show you all these things exist already very simple to see and I've been trying to show this to Fermi lab for eight years so let's just show it now okay my wonderful friends this is a uh, very important today this is about my dipole electron flood theory. Now, this is from CERN and Fermilab and all the big guys. What they do is they take big huge particles and smash them together as in protons and neutrons which are huge huge things and they smash them and then they get all of this debris they call it the particle zoo. Well what are they actually doing? I say that a proton is not just a big ball that smashes into little pieces of glass, basically. It is literally a ball of dipole electrons. And you say, a dipole electron? Yes. And they have admitted that electrons are dipoles. They just don't. They, they they just don't understand it. I do very very clearly, and I will show you extremely clearly what an electron is, and it is a dipole, and it is all the things they've been looking for. Now remember this structure right here. That's the structure of a photon. All right, and a photon is only made of the dipoles. Two dipoles back together make a photon. One dipole, which is one of the blue and the red in this case, they're showing it that way, is literally a dipole electron. You see it? A dipole electron. It has a positive and a negative. Can I show that? I absolutely can. So don't forget, this is their particle zoo created from smashing big balls of things together and they just get a zoo of particles. And they, they can see these particles now using the CMOS, but they don't really understand where they came from because of the nature of the collision. It's just debris. We're using, we're starting with light, so we're starting right there. That's where we're starting. All right, they're starting with huge balls, so when they get it, they just go all over. Some of them have high energy, some of them have low energy. It depends on how close the particle was to the nucleus. And that's what it is. It's, they're glued to the nucleus. And the nucleus is the dark matter. So let's dig in. All right, what I'm going to be showing you is Fermi Labs particles and the same thing CERN, they found the same particles. And these are the particles we found, but using light, not the zoo. We use just the photons. Then I'm going to show you electron showers and muons and how we actually divided them and separated them. And then what they, they claim is the energy levels and so forth and the Dirac neutrinos. And then light in a, a whole series of photos here that show the interactions of light as they spin, as they become neutrinos, as they become photons, as they become sterile muons and electron showers. 
I got it all. And I can show different speeds. I can show light slowing down. I can show light speeding up. I can show light separated in the black and the white. All of this we will see in a second. Okay, let's just start with the very basic. What is the smallest particle that exists? Fermi Lab says it's this. That is a fixed particle, never changes. This one can get big and small and it has no mass. That has all the mass. And they, I agree with that. It's a fixed bowling ball and really never changes. And this is, this is right from Fermilab. This is not my part. This is wrong. Up here, this should not be. They're only one size. One size fits all. No light particle is a different size the muon. All the same. This is different. The glowy part, which is the point particle, this is point-like, this is fixed. The point-like starts with some kind of an energy field and it gets big and it has no mass. And I could show this in an atomic bomb blast, which I will. That has all the mass and no energy, but when it hits something, it just knocks it over. This has all the energy and no mass. It just hits something and it just burns it up. Okay, we've got a lot of rumble of thunder going on outside. I'm up in the northeast. I'll tell you, the atmosphere is in turmoil, and I can explain that, too. Now, AdamCentral.com. This is about atomic bomb blast. I have this running in slow motion. Watch what happens. The th wow, it's been just going on continuously. All right, now, here's what's going to happen. The first thing is the, the white particles come. Look at the house. It's just smoking up. It's just smoking. No, nothing's moving. All the wires, the poles, and everything are... I'm going to stop it. As you can see, it's just smoking. What the heck is going on? No movement whatsoever. That's because that's the white particles. I told you, they have no mass. No mass, which means they don't push, but they have all the energy. It's a very, very strange concept. Now, in a second, the house will take off, and then it will turn around and come back. Now, why would it do that? First of all, the house being slammed is because of the black particles, which were inside the white particles. The white particles go first, as I showed you. The black comes next. Pew. Now, the, there's still a bunch of black back here. It's a void. It'll all turn around and come back. Watch. Well, not all, but it'll try to come back. So now it's just all done. There it goes. Now watch. Keep your eye on it. Look at it. Why would that happen? That's sort of strange. So once again, they see these particles, no clue where they came from. We see them, identical same particles, and they are photons, and that's from light. So there is no question these are light particles, and they are seen with CMOS. This one never changes, never changes. They're glued together. They call them gluons, Dirac neutrinos, two of them back to back, just like bar magnets. That one's glowing because it's concussing with all the particles that are in front of it. You can probably see those little glowy parts. Any field pushes against another field. They both gain energy and they glow. That's what glow is. That's what light is, is field-to-field -field concussion. So this is coming forward this way. These don't change. All they are is they, they actually carry the light. And I can, I can show that quite clearly. So don't forget, this was the Fermilab particles. Whoops, where was it here? Hold on. These are the Fermilab particles, and these are our particles. There's no difference. And that's only because they smash big, big protons into little bitty, bitty pieces, and then they end up getting some light particles, yes. So I agree with exactly what they say. Bowling ball, all the mass, no energy, uh, no, no burn, all the burn, no mass. Now, here's what happens in the end. We accelerated the light. And that is light accelerating. I'll show you light not accelerated. And this is light accelerated. And that's the particle in the light. And we can see that particle. And here, the white separates from the black. Don't forget, the white and the black were attached as it came forward. When it hit the Venturi, which is a tuned little device that only f lets the white particles through and keeps the black out. You see the black ones over here? There they are. All the white is a white shower, and here they reattach. These are called sterile muons, white electron showers. They started out as the neutrinos. Those are the neutrinos. 
These right here are, this is an electron neutrino, that's a muon neutrino. They might call that matter, antimatter, whatever you want to call it. They're completely opposite of each other. I agree with that 100%. All the mass and no burn. All the burn and no mass. So I agree with that. They're totally opposites. But they don't annihilate each other. They complement each other. The black carries the white. The, back, the black literally pushes the white. And this I can show as well. And here it is right here. There's the black coming through along with mostly white but a little bit of the black and it's showing the black is literally the pusher of the white. Now I'm going to show you another thing right now which is an atomic bomb blast because this is an, a subatomic nuclear explosion. We had the particles that attached together, pew, they came through, the white separated and the black separated from the white. In this case a little bit of the black is coming through, so it's pushing the white ahead of it in this big arc. All right. Now, this right here is all the energy and no mass. And I can show that and I will right now. This is all the mass and no burn. So burn, no mass. No ma uh, mass completely and no burn. So if, I, if there was a house here, which there will be, <laughs> and as this comes through, the house will first get hit by the white. And what's the white going to do? That's just all burn. It'll burn that house right up, just a smoke right up, just straight up in the air. Oh, no push this way at all, just straight up in the air. Then the black will hit the house and pew, the house goes. That's because of this subatomic nuclear explosion. And that's because all matter is wrapped up with the white particles on the outside of it, the dark is on the inside. The atomic bomb goes off, pew, the white goes out first, the black comes next. That's how it works, and the black is pushing the white. So as soon as the white is all past its, the house, the house will be burnt, and then pew, it gets knocked down. Okay, so there was the house. Burn, 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 burn. Pew. And then it has to come back. Now we're continuously forcing through here, so nothing has to come back for us. We didn't create an explosion where it recollapses. We are just forcing the white particles out ahead of the black. Now, if we can do this, which we obviously can, we should be able to possibly create free energy. And how would we do that? Doing just this. This is the the acceleration of light. That should not be accelerating like that. that. That's according to their standard model. All right, this is what light should be. It just goes pop, 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 pop. It's concussing all the other particles in the air. That's why we're seeing, seeing all these things glowing. Now, this is just beginning to accelerate. This is exactly at the point of acceleration. Otherwise, it would just be a nice even wave all the way. Boom, 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 boom. But it's, it's starting to be sucked forward. And you can see it's starting to elongate. Now, it will really get sucked forward here as it approaches the Ventura. And here we show virtually no question that's acceleration. Now, why are we seeing these, these little dots here everywhere? And why are we seeing these reverse curving things and these are curving this way and why are we seeing these little white things and oh, boy it's a mess what the heck is going on let me focus in a little here so I see a little more detail now don't forget pulse red laser bip, 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 bip. and then it senses the venturi here and at this point, it has to accelerate, and it's being pulled through the venturi. A, a venturi accelerates things. This is the acceleration, just like a jet fighter breaking the sound, the speed of sound. We're breaking the speed of normal light. A normal red laser is going to go boom, 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 and just that's forever. That's what Einstein says. They do slow down. There is no question whatsoever. Light slows down. I'll show you that quite clearly, and it speeds up. So why, what are we looking at? Remember the wave is being pulled out and it is a wave and a particle. That is the particle. That little strip right there is the particle. Now why is it 
not real bright here and it's a little brighter and it's now it's real bright and now it's just nothing but white and the little black particles are all, all around the outside and they reattach almost instantly right after the venture I mean instantly at the speed of light you're talking about very very instantaneous reaction to where they recouple they do not want to be apart that's what electricity is, is the white and the black desperately want to be attached together and here they're accelerating they're still attached they're still attached still attached still attached boom no more can't be attached the black slams the white through and it squirts it through just like a tube of toothpaste now can we use that energy is there any way to harvest that because that is supposed to be literally up to trillions of electron volts and all we would use to start this is is millions of electron volts tops if we can get out of here billions or trillions, that's just phenomenal increase in energy. But we have to harvest it. How would we be able to do that? Okay, I think it would be very simple to harvest that. If this is what it looks like to me, which is just that fluffy white stuff, and the black is slamming it through, forcing it to squirt out here violently, if we can harvest it through a a bus bar basically a conductor that brings it down and conducts it through a photodiode that's a gate it goes it opens the gate it goes through it tries to come back the gate it can't come back so a photodiode lets electricity come down and it tries to come back it can't it's stuck in the batteries or it goes through your devices create heat light electricity whatever you want and then you use a little bit of it to keep the laser running. We should at least be able to get 200 times more energy. At least 200 times more than we started with. That's what they, the physics say. And that is at least. But we have to harvest it. Now, how would we harvest it? Like I say, this is a Venturi. This is just a restriction. That's all it is. And we're, all we're using is light. No dangerous big bang of throwing huge hand grenades out. We're just using particles of light, which are photons. You're sitting, they're going all over right now. When they come through there, they're being extremely concentrated. That is a very, very, very extreme concentration. It's called white electron showers. I'll show you the physics for it in a second. They've wanted to do this for 60, 70 years. And they never could figure out how to harvest the photons the only thing they could do is crash fields together head on now we're crashing fields together but sideways and the black particles push them through the fields now are so crushed because of the black particles it's just like taking a, a, a hammer and slamming it. it's like a jackhammer and the black ones they just bang them through there but they bounce off they can't get through they bounce off I'll show you that very clearly if we can just get that white energy it's just the amount of energy should be literally staggering and you can see it's being just radiated out of here intensely that's why these light part waves these are waves of light you see they come through as a wave and a particle well they're being excited backwards because of the backwards field you see this this is what's called reverse emf hold on you should be able to see that. You see those reverse waves? <laughs> That's because of this gigantic, enormous, incredible, inc just intense radiation from this particle destruction. This is particle destruction on steroids. And this is called electron showers. Let me show you the physics for it. But I'm going to tell you right now, they are thinking that these neutrinos separate and then they stay separated for a long time. No. Instantaneously, they come back together. There is no long duration separation. Okay, let's tie up on a couple of more loose ends. I just showed you the division between the black and the white. The white is all the burn. The black is all the push. This is light not accelerating. This is light accelerating. Einstein wasn't correct. What is accelerating? What is the particle look like? Well, here it is right here. Once again, off goes the light so we can see better. Now, this is the neutrino phase. You see this over here? This is not 
fully formed photons yet. This is a fully formed photon. This is a fully formed photon. They begin to change their energy values as they bang up against the reverse field. Bang, 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 and then they just explode. They are increasing energy as they get glowier and glowier and because they're just getting more and more mass. Mass is energy. Energy is glow. Got it? Mass is energy. All right? Mass changes. The same particle is getting stronger and stronger and stronger as it increases. It's slamming against something. That's all they're seeing is these, they call them flavors, and they get more and more and more energetic until they explode. In this case. Now, normally they're not going to see them explode. Normally, they see these, as I showed you before. They see that particle. Here it is right here, in the particle zoo. Here it is. Now, we took that particle and broke these apart. And they can see these particles too. These are the same particles they see broken apart. And then they see green ones, they see blue ones, they see red ones, and they have never seen the black ones. <laughs> they, they have never seen the black ones, really. And I'm showing you the black ones right here. Attached to the white ones. The reason they never see them is they might see them in debris, but they don't really know they're there because they don't radiate out. Black, black particles, which are the muons, which are the dark energy, the dark matter, and all that. Dark energy is push. Dark matter is, is mass. All right, so this is the mass. This is the burn. So any energy, which you would call field energy, is created by this one. That one goes up and goes down, just as you can see here. One of them's big and one of them is small. And that's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and that's going to flop and that one's going to come to the front to charge up. That's what the muon wobble is or the oscillation, whatever you want to call it. And that's why they spin. And spin they do. And this is how light travels. It spins. It does not flap. It doesn't go like this and flap like that and they have two slits and they go back and forth and create these patterns. It's because the light is spinning. Sometimes it spins off this way, sometimes it spins off this way. This is literally a drill bit. Now, red is slow, so that drill bit is like this. Some, some of them are so fast you can't see any drill, like the green and the blue, it's just straight across. Because it's just too, too fast to see. Look at the green here. Well, here, this is, well, let me show you the green first of all. Look, look at this. This is the same photon. Same photon, but here it is beginning to flip. You see the white at the bottom is ch charged up a lot more than this one. And this will go flip, and that one will come to the front and start to charge up. And then it'll go flip, and they'll do the same thing. And flip, 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 and that's what they do. And here's what they look like as they're moving on down the road. Boom. All right. Now, these are in a bundle. There, there's too many fields too close together, they start to glow. All it is is field to field creates a glow. It's the cashmere effect. The closer you get to the other field, the more glow you get and the more energy is created. And the fields, you know, will keep them apart. Alright, so we created this right here. We created the muon neutrinos and the electron neutrinos. Saw them as the black and the white. And then we saw the muons separate, go on its way, and the electron shower takes over from an electron neutrino. So you get one electron neutrino and hits a shower, and you get that brilliant, brilliant blast of particles. This literally should be at least 200 times more energy than you started when the light started. And this, my friends, is dark matter and dark energy. See the black balls? All of these balls are identically the same size. Every one of them is the same. You don't see them exactly. You see them sort of modeled looking. But if you could see them in their exactness, 
when you see them in the photons, they're every single ball is exactly the same size. And the only reason you can see them now is because they obscure the white from coming out. They are on top of the white. That never, ever, ever happens once you get past light. Once you're up into the atomic realm, the core is dark. The white surrounds the core. So you never see inside into the blackness. The black doesn't emit. It doesn't radiate. It doesn't reflect. And it, it, it does absorb. And when I say absorb, it doesn't take it inside of itself. It absorbs it into a, a shell. Right? The black is on the inside and all the white particles collect around it. They want to be attached. And then a certain mass of them will attach. And at that point, there's so many of them around it, it says, we don't want any more. That's a stable atom. It says, I got enough white particles. So some more comes and they say, no, 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 you stay out of there. And they say, well, I want to come in. I want to be t attached to that black too. And they said, well, you can stay out here, but no closer. All right, so you got the core and it's made up of all of these particles. All right, so here's your core. It's not one big ball. It's all these particles. And around that, inside, is going to be a black center. All right, it's completely coated with these. Now, more of them want to get in there. And they say, no, you can't. You can not You can stay right out there. I'll push you out here. You try to shove your way in. You can stay right there. That's what's called the, the orbitals. That's how a, 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 the nucleus is constructed. The nucleus is a dipole, and it has dark matter, and it has the, the white matter. And that's why everything you have, is that has a mass. If that was nothing more than the, the white stuff, you'd drop it, and then nothing would happen. It would burn a hole through there. <laughs> it, wouldn't, it wouldn't go bang. So there's all kinds of black matter in here attached to the white matter. Basically, that's as simple as it gets. There's a dark core, white matter surrounding it, and the periodic table has to change completely. Hydrogen is approximately, say, 1835, somewhere around there, of these particles. And then you get up to helium. I think you, I figured it out was 7,350, something like that, in a helium. <laughs> these are the two smallest ones that exist. So you up here, you're in the hundreds of thousands of, of these particles. Now, what that does, though, it creates the, all the isotopes and the elegance of chemistry that allows for life. All right, because life could never exist with just these limited number of particles. You, when you see what life is all about, you just can't believe it. I've been studying very, very deeply into biology and how all, all the organ systems and work and the enzymes and the elegance of what bacteria can create, ribosomes, transfer RNA and, you know, um, it's just absolutely amazing. And they're actually finding new organs and everything else inside the body. They never even knew were there. Interstitial is the one that's the main one that covers the entire body. And it's a fluid-filled highway, carries all enzymes. Everything's got to change. And it's it, it, so we got from chemistry to light to biology, geology, that's just way off. All right, so we're, everything's changing, and we have the books now, we're coming up with the books. We're writing all the new books, electron flood theory, mud fossils, geology, particle theory, history, Velikovsky, cosmos, mythology, everything, straight across the board. And, um... And I guess you probably have to start with the smallest particle that exists is light. You say, where did light come from? <laughs> I don't know. But I can tell you what. The red is this one down here, and it goes much slower than the green. You see the green coming in here hot? <laughs> Way out here, it reconcusses. Now, at some point, they might have been going the same speed. I don't know. I don't see how that's really realistic, but it could be. This is the blue coming in hot. And <laughs> slowing down. If that's not light slowing down, I don't know what I can say. And if this isn't light speeding up, I don't know what I can say about that either. 
And this if you're in light splitting, and this isn't light coming back together, I don't know what I can say about that. If that's not fusion and that's not fission and fusion, I don't know what to say about that. I mean, I got there's a lot of things I don't know what to say about. <laughs> and this is what the Russians found in space. This is how I got involved with Fermi Lab, Don Lincoln. I sent him this, and I sent him. I was talking to the Russians, and I say, "You, you guys found dark matter in space. That's a black hole." I said, "That your dark matter is congealed. All the charged particles are pushing in the center." And then I showed him all my stuff, and uh, it didn't go well. And so that was a long time ago, and I'm still sort of at odds. With, with Don, and who, who's the one that did this? He's the one that showed these particles. And then we found them. Where's his work? No, I can't find it. Anyway, he, th these are the ones they found, the black one and the white one. And the white one he showed that was the point particle, and the black one was the fixed particle. Here it is right here. That's Don's work. No, that's my work. I think we can get some free energy, but, but, you know, being pushed to the side and say, don't ever contact us again. And every time you see anything he puts down, he says, if you have any questions, if you have any comments, I'm not allowed. It's not me. And I'm showing them, this is the kind of Higgs fields they get. When they smash these things together, everything goes flying, a million zillion particles. The red ones sort of hang around because they're very loosely held, so they just sort of bounce around and... The ones that are real close to the center, pew, they take off like a rocket ship. That's the difference between the strong, strong force and the ones that were weak out on the outside. The tighter it is to the center, the more tightly it's held, that's all. And these are, are and like, again, there's going to be a whole set, and then there's going to be more, then there's going to be more, then there's going to be more. It depends on how big the particle is. So the ones that are in the closest are going to be tight, and they're really going to take off. Now, what haven't I shown you? So I showed you Fermi Lab stuff. I showed you our stuff. I showed you Fermi Lab's take on electron showers. I have to show you the details. This is what they call the standard model. And I can tell you right now, this is the only particle in that one that exists, the white and the black. Case closed. The two of them together make a gluon. Two gluons make a photon. And everything else is made of those two particles in various states of interaction, spinning up, down, strange, top, charm, quark. I mean, they got so many things. <laughs> but they're all accounted for by electron flood theory, which is my dipole electron flood theory. Um, what haven't I shown? Well, these are Higgs fields coming at us. You see the shape of them? And this field here is being crushed by this and this on the two sides, turning it blue. So you can, you can change uh, colors. And see this phone? That's the same phone we used to do all this research. It's just the Samsung Galaxy S3. Uh, that's the matter and antimatter, Diarac neutrino. They see them, they just don't know what to think about it. Uh, and again, it, because they're doing this, they're making a particle zoo out of these huge things, smashing together, and all the stuff goes flying in chunks of all different sizes. All right, so this, oh, well, this is the killer. Where do you see this? This is the only time I've ever seen this. That little dot there is. I believe a reverse spinning particle. You see it? What the heck is going on there? Now, I believe it's spinning in reverse. Now, I believe this next shot I'm going to show you is where this particle interacted with one of these fields. All right, so let's watch that one. Oh, where are you, mini disc? Here it is right here. Look at this. All right, so all your Higgs fields are coming through, and a Higgs field is the reestablishment of the black and the white particle. They start to Higgs and create these circular patterns. I'll show you that actually happening. Now, 
This was the reverse. So there's no field around this until it actually bangs into this. Then it creates this reverse spinning field. This one's spinning, the bottom one's spinning this way. My estimation, bottom one's spinning this way. See if you think I'm right. This one's spinning that way, if it could spin, but it's not spinning because it, it's gathering this field. But now it hit the field and it's splaying that field out. And what did it do? It stripped off part of the field. It's stripping it off and turn, spinning it this way. Anytime you see a real white, bright white, it's interaction of fields. So this one here, its field-ish thing has interacted with this one. This one coming this way, this one going this way. So what do you do? You, you stripped it off. You stripped this thing right off. Okay, this one goes this way, this one comes this way. This one comes off, and as this under one comes up, it's underneath it, it strips it off and it just tumbles it this way. And that I, is just, I don't know what to think about it other than it's there. So that's not even light. And you can see it's interacting with the, the field around it. It's, it's, um, I see no other alternative other than it's a reverse spinner and it's going this way, this one's going this way, and it's stripping off a piece just like you unrolled a piece of spaghetti off of there. Now, let's look at these fields a little closer to, to really understand the Higgs fields. Okay, I've been talking all kinds about electron showers. Well, they're shown here, this guy from uh, Glasgow University, they actually can accelerate light. They're showing it accelerating in two different phases here. Now, I also can do that. I can show ours accelerating. This was the same. I did this here in my shop using just pulse laser, very, very similar to what they did. But we can also show that the light actually accelerates here you see that, that's acceleration and we can show that it actually slows down and there that is no question it's slowing down very fast here and now it's becoming open slowing down that's basically what they call a red shift it's shifting from blue towards the red now here is what electron showers do as far as energy goes this is the physics of electron showers now, they tried to do a special meeting in 1978 to try to figure out how to make head electrons collide. They couldn't figure it out. All you got to do is squish them sideways. They don't have to hit head on. So they're trying to use proton-proton collisions to decay to hadrons, to decay to neutrinos, antineutrinos, collect, creating electrons and muons, which is exactly what they did, which is the neutron neutrinos. And they end up having a few hundred billion electron volts to a few trillion. That's the physics of electron showers. That's why we need to investigate this. I'm clearly showing, absolutely clearly, without question, that we've created electron showers. This is the muon. This is the electron shower. All right, we created those in actual light, not just in on a painting on a picture. All right, we created those showers right there. There they are. And the black particles surround them. They're called electron showers. Now if they have the energy that they say they do, we're good to go. And here they are right there. This is it. This is it. The muon neutrino, electron neutrino come in together, black and white, all balled together, and then they white because the only one can get through because it's the only one who's squished down. The black is too big and it's a solid mass. It ends up just slamming the white. Bam, bam, get out of the way, get out of the way, get out of the way. And then it just can't get any further. And it all bounces off. And somehow there's a whole batch of extra black on this side. They say there's an inequity in the different charges. Now, I don't know if that's true or not, but I can tell you what. The black ones that left over here, I can almost assure you, did not jump over here somehow and get ahead and attach back here. There is no entanglement as they think of entanglement. They are together until they split apart and then they find somebody else to pair up with. All right, these are what they call the Higgs fields. Now, the best one that you can see is this one right here. This is that white spray coming through. These are electron showers. No black particles. They are looking for black particles. 
Now they came down here and splashed. You see this little white sizzler? Bang! It hit this and it's creating a field. It's, it's smacked into a black particle or the black particle sucked it into it. I don't know which way it works, but one of them hitting the other and they all have that little spritz. You can see them. If you trace them down, you can follow them to where they hit a field. You know, it's hard to follow them, but you, I, I've seen so much of this. I can, I can tell you that little tiny spritz is coming down. Now, so these fields are being created by the concussion of the white spray being attracted I guess I at this point is I'm a little confused I got to be perfectly honest with you but you can see you see the little spritzes coming out bang it hits that and starts to spin it bang it's that bang 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 they're coming all around this is the light coming straight at us so in here there's nothing there's no Higgs fields at all because there's nothing to hit yet all we're seeing is white on the outside edges they're banging into the the black particles and making Higgs field show up, which is exactly what you see here. It or they hover around outside edges. You see, there's nothing in here. There's no, no black here. Zero, zero, none, na, nothing. But they're all around the edges. So we would have been st sitting here looking into this, not seeing anything but white, and seeing little sizzles come out and hit the black ones around. So here we are here looking into it. Right. I hope that makes sense. We're looking into it here and we're not seeing anything, but these are the little Higgs, the little sizzlers coming out that are creating these fields. And the same thing, the other view we had was here. We're looking in, this is all whiteness here. We're in the midst of the whiteness. And all of that is coming out to hit black particles. That's the way I'm seeing it. I don't see any other way to look at it. And there's a lot to this here. I, I, I started to really try to understand why, what's these black lines and these white lines? What's going on? And what about a shock wave and a sonic boom? You know, it's not just one boom. I hear it here, the next guy hears it down the street, the next guy hears it down the street, I mean almost instantaneously, but it's not like one boom that just goes out from one area. It's a continuous shockwave boom, which is exactly what we created with the light. It's a shockwave light boom. The other one is a shockwave sound boom. All right, anyway, this is my electron flood theory, dipole electron flood theory. There's nothing but dipoles, and they make everything there is. Right? The green is identical to the red. They flip and flop as they go through. They spin. They spin like this. They spin like that. Anytime there's a field interaction, there's a glow. We separated the black from the white. That's the muons and electron showers. And now let's see what the energy value could be. And don't forget, if we could do this, if we could do this, my friends, if we could simply do that, you might be able to do this. Walk around in the woods with a box like this that you could plug anything into anywhere you want. Have them in your car, just run your whole car. And I mean, I'm talking something about this size. If this is the kind of energy that we're going to see in a second is real. And now it has to be tested. I can't do this. I don't have the facilities. I don't have the engineers. I don't have the money. I don't have any of that stuff. I have the ideas and I have the, I can show you. And Rod Warren did this. It was, a, it was basically an accident. But when I saw what he did, I knew exactly what he did because this is what I do. I study atomic physics. And I knew that he had separated the light and he had accelerated the light. And if we can get it here, we got a chance to get out of this mess we're in now. The, the atmosphere is destroyed because of the expansion. It's the expansion of the atmosphere. Now it's so turmoiled as it spins through space. Because space is saturated with particles. That's why we're getting all the lightning. We have lightning almost 24 hours a day now, recently. Over in the out, in the west and all that, in the Midwest, it's just absolutely torrential downpours and uh, hurricanes, I mean uh, floods and 
um, tornadoes and um, ice, gi gigantic ice balls. And that's the compression of the atmosphere. There's a layer out there, you know, that's a minus 100 degrees. And when it condenses, that if that layer gets condensed because of so much compression, that's when you get these huge ice balls. All right, let me just show you that layer real quick. I, you know, I, I know these are taking a long time, but if you're really interested in understanding the truth, it does take a little while to do it. Okay, my friends, here is the situation with our atmosphere and the solar particles that are in space. There's a ton of dust and debris and light. As I showed you, light is a particle itself. It's coming from the sun to us. So th there's particles in space that are banging around with all kinds of other particles. Now, what is primarily out in our outer atmosphere is these OH- particles and, and um, OH just means it's almost water. H2O is water. Now, as this compression crushes the atmosphere, it creates water. It's just that, that compression, if you have a compressor, which I do, it, if when it runs for long periods of time or a certain time, you have to let out the water that's inside because it compresses the, the, the air and actually makes water. That's what. That's when it rains. That's what happens. The atmosphere is compressed. It compresses the the hydrogen and oxygen together and makes water. So, what's happening out here now is this is what they call the ionosphere. All right. You see all these little negatives and so forth out here. Those are particles, ions. They mean that they're, they're charged particles. And they're spinning around with our Earth, spinning those charged particles against all the other particles that are in space. And there is a ton of them. There is no vacuum whatsoever in space. So we're scrubbing through there. It's almost 3,000 degrees out here. 3,000 degrees. Why? Why would it be 3,000 degrees out here? Just below, it's minus 100. Same thing with the sun. On the sun's surface, you know, it's only 10,000 degrees. You know how much it is way out at the corona? Millions. Why? They have no idea. No clue whatsoever. The reason is the sun is also scrubbing through space. And it's a big massive ball scrubbing through. Its particles are radiating out, radiating out because they're just being so excited. And then they hit this outer layer and that, that's where they're corona is, which is the same as our ionosphere. Our ionosphere is, let's say, right around 2700 degrees, something like that. Just below, well, let me just show you the temperatures. And here's what the sun is doing, exact same thing. And space is 100% saturated, literally saturated. And even Fermilab says the same thing. Empty space is not empty. It's what they call a quantum foam. Everything that goes through there is slowing down, and everything that goes through there is scrubbing, and everything that goes through there is creating little bits of light energy. All right, it's creating interactions of energy. All right, this uh, also supports electron flood theory 100%. The particles coming from the sun are coming all the way through space, and whatever particles of light from everywhere has to come through the particles that are in space, which is saturated. Now, this is where the space station goes way up the exosphere that's outside our, what we consider our atmosphere. So they're, they're scrubbing through very little out there. There's, here is where it really starts to crush into our field. All right, so this is our field is right there, our ion field. Ions are charged particles ionosphere. Now, the layer, the high temperature, 1500 degrees, that's Celsius, that's 2700 degrees or so. And it says this is where they destroy the meteorites, they all burn up in there. Well, they don't burn up completely. Obviously, no, everybody knows about meteorites. Now, what's just below that? So don't forget, we're up to 2700 degrees Fahrenheit. Just below that, it's minus 80 degrees. Celsius. That's minus 112 
Fahrenheit. We got a 3,000 degree temperature difference right there. Why? How the hell would that happen? I could tell you why it's happening. This is getting scrubbed like crazy and it's attached to these cold particles. The black ones are cold. They're just solid cold. And the white ones are just solid hot. So you got solid hot, you got solid cold. Now, what happens? There's gases in there. There's a lot of gases, oxygens and hydrogens and all kinds of gases. As this envelope expands, which is expanding so fast now, it crushes harder and harder. So you got a, a distance from here to here, which is normal. Well, we're way out here now. Of course, the space station is up and still outside of this, but it's now forcing so hard that these two layers are crushing together and forming water but it's not down here where you normally get your water. Crushing so hard that out here this coldest area is condensing. That's where you get these big balls of hail. The hail is falling. It's just absolutely stunningly large and it will get bigger. And I don't see any, any change to this at all unless we can stop expanding things. And right now all the forests are burning and it's, every time it gets hotter you get more and more expansion. The more and more expansion you get more and more envelope. You hear the thunder? It's just been going on continuously. And this is way up thunder and lightning. This isn't lightning and thunder that's coming to the earth. This is in, in most cases. It does eventually. But it's collecting in our in our atmosphere out here. So much turmoil and it's trying. there's so many balls of of energy that they're trying to find a place to run and hide to, and they can't. So they're just trying to spread out and that's why you see all these webs of lightning all over. My wife came in this morning she said, did you see the lightning last night? And I said, no. <laughs> she said it was just the whole, she said I never saw anything like it. The whole sky was lit up just continuously flashing back and forth. And I said, did you, did, did you hear a lot of concussive noises and she said not a lot there was a couple but not you know you hear just a, a like a rumbling they used to call it a bowling up in the sky or something like that running on a bowling alley it's, it's, it makes that sound but it's not coming to earth necessarily at this point but the, our atmosphere is getting so charged up now that it's quite likely that the the pole will flip before too long i mean it's just Things are out of control, my friends. That's all I can tell you. And the only way out of this is to make something like this that would have no impact on the environment. And you get free energy. You could do all the things you want. You clean up the water. You know, light lights for food, plants, and so on. So sooner or later, the water's going to be bad. The heat's just going to be overwhelming. You know, this could be air conditioning, drive cars, airplanes, anything you want. You know, and it's very, very cheap, solid state, durable. And you're only working with little tiny, 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 tiny lasers. And they should be able to provide lots and lots of energy. Let's just go look at that electron shower chart, how much energy it should be able to provide. Now, if it's true, it's true. If it's not true, well, it didn't work. But it's not as much as spending billions and billions of dollars for decades and decades and decades getting nowhere. And they're still never going to get anywhere because they don't understand it because they will not look. That's what it all boils down to is the science has become dogma. And if you come along with anything new, you will be vilified and destroyed if you live in that realm. I don't live in that realm, so I don't really care. But I think we all real live in a realm where we'd like to have some reality and have some free energy and have some some clean water and all the rest and that's never going to happen with who the people you got in charge right now my friends never and when i say in charge i'm talking about the scientists i'm not talking about the politicians the politicians are just puppets okay my friends we are finally getting down to the point of being able to see electrons and make some determinations about what they are and how they react to fields and so forth now they're saying, and this just came out today, electrons are extremely round, completely, totally round. A new measurement confirms. Well, let's talk about that new measurement and how they did it and what they did find. And what is an electron? I'm going to tell you right now, they do not know what an electron is. I'm serious. They have no idea what an electron is, and they're saying it's round. Well, 
let me show you something. Let's just start right now. This is um, from some physicists, University of Chicago, one of scientists behind the previous best measurement of electrons roundness. Well, what's an electron? They're using molecules to try to find electrons. You can't do that. It's, it's, it's impossible. A molecule is made of dipoles. This is what they do not understand. And I will show you quite clearly I do. It says, for now, the new result shows no trace of any hidden particles. Well, I don't think there's any hidden particles. It's just they don't see what's in front of them. Leaving unsolved the mystery of how matter gained the upper hand. And that, DeMille says, leaves us with the question, what is out there? <laughs> That's a good question. And I can show you what's out there. Now, let's see what they have to say in their YouTube about neutrinos and the mystery of the universe's mass. How did the universe get any mass? They think if the Big Bang happened, that would have been it. There would no, it, it would have been equal parts of matter, antimatter. There, there would be nothing. The universe should not exist according to the laws of physics. I'm not kidding you. They can't figure out gravity. They don't know what light is. They don't know what electrons are, particles. They don't know the nature of the, the, the proton. Proton's not a big ball like that with a couple of little quarks floating around in there. It's approximately, I'm coming up with around 1823 dipoles. Each one of these is, is a magnet. It's a dipole. It has a positive and a negative. They all ball together and then they hit stability at about 1823. That's what a proton is. Now let's see what they have to say. Okay, these are the guys that I really want to talk to. Is, is uh, specifically Don Lincoln, who's making all these claims about neutrinos and so forth. I've tried to engage with him, and it hasn't worked out. Uh, and he's making all these claims, and I think he should look at my research because, I, as I showed you, or will show you, it's pretty valid. And this is um, Sabine Hofsenfelder, Hoff, Hoff, I believe is how you pronounce her name. Um, and she is also talking about science is, is, is changing drastically. Physics anomaly, no one talks about it. There's all kinds of problems they have. Don Lincoln, though, is sticking with the company line, and I really sort of had it out with him. I'd love to discuss it on a, on a friendly, you know, basically a debate. Just say, why, why do you say this, Don? Let me show you what I have to present. That's all I'm asking for. And he's a government employer, or he was, or, or he's working for Fermilab, or he's associated with somewhere, he's a director there or something. I don't know what he does specifically, but he has told me to just stay away. And that, I just don't, don't go with that. I say, what is wrong with my evidence? And he just says, because you're a tinfoil hat guy, and go away. Now, that's just not right, Don. It's, not, it's time for you to stand up, my brother, and... and, and and defend yourself because I am assaulting you. I am assailing you. I am questioning your competence. And that's, you know, it's time for you to either cut the cheese or take a hike. I don't know what else to say. I mean, this is going on for eight years now. It's time to get this out of the way. One way or the other. I'm wrong or you're wrong. It doesn't go both ways.